Guys, I'll tell you, I gotta, this, none of this is going exactly how we planned it. <laughs> and some of these things have been kind of my fault because I've been really scared about this show, actually. Um, yeah, thanks. Um, so I just need to kind of rip the Band-Aid off, you know? Um, this is this is the first show that we have played well this year, but the first show specifically since my brother Jay, who played bass with us for 23 years, went to heaven to be with Jesus. Um, man, he he had this really long health battle, and we just saw Jesus carry him through so much. And a lot of that was because of people just like you praying for him. I'm telling you, man, there is such a power when the church comes together. And we're not against each other, but we're for the kingdom. So over these last years, man, I'm telling you, the Lord has just has seen us through so many things and it has been for Jay it was such an uphill battle but we were just singing that song my story and man I'm telling you the story of Jay's life continues to just blow us away how Jesus had used him in the lives of people and it, it wasn't by some you know it, you know he was like an Olympic medalist of something you know what I mean it was through him just getting through every day and in the midst of a great amount of pain, man, God was just shining through him like so brightly. It was pretty incredible. He was my best friend on this planet. He and my wife, Candace, you know, they're my best friends. And Ooh, yeah, it doesn't seem real that he's not here right now. And when it dawns on me that it is though, it hurts so bad. But in the midst of it, I got to tell you, when I think about the fact that he's not hurting anymore, I feel like I can take that pain for a little while. Amen. We'll sing it in a minute too. I just want to, is it okay if I just shared one J story with you there? I, um, I don't really know how to do this. Um, I believe it, man. He really has carried my whole family. Um, one of the most amazing days, though, was in the last couple of years. Just as we were coming back from the craziness of the pandemic and they started having some shows and figuring out how to do that. We played a really little place in South Carolina. My brother at this point in his life had had both of his feet amputated to save his life. He had, couldn't see out of one eye, you know. His sight, eyesight was failing in the other eye. He was on dialysis that he was doing on the tour bus because he wanted to just go, you know, still. He was losing fingers. And he was still every day trusting in healer Jesus. Because man, I'm telling you, for about seven years straight, we saw God pour out and just do the miraculous right in front of our eyes. And before and after Jay was in a wheelchair, man, we saw him pray for people and the power of God just move. He just knew where his help came from and he knew who Jesus is. Yeah. So Jay had a practice every day when we would come to a venue. He and his family would go through the room and would lay hands on every single seat in the place that we would play. If Jay couldn't get to it in his chair, uh, he would call for one of his kids to go in and reach and touch in every seat to make sure every seat had been prayed for. And we would ask Jesus to come and move in the life of the person who was gonna sit in that seat. And I'm telling you, it's incredible to see what Jesus would do every night. So as Jay finished that time, he was headed backstage. He's rolling along. He's like a motorized wheelchair. And I was, I was coming out to lead a little question-answer time. 
And so he, we passed each other. And I sat down and when people started coming in to, for the Q&A time, this one man came and sat right dead center in the middle. And he had the kind of look on his face that told me, I'm going to tell you something whether you want to hear it or not. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you're a pastor in here, you know that face, you know? This guy is the first one to raise his hand and launches off into a story about how he had been a pastor and I, I recognized he had been. You know, he said, this is not my kind of thing anymore is what he says about the evening. And so uh, he shares with us about how there had been a ministry event and a young person kind of on his watch had lost their life and it was absolutely horrific coming. And he followed the trail like a lot of us do. How could a loving God, you know, and he had not only left the ministry, but he had left his faith altogether. And he said, well, that's, you know, my story. I want to know your story. So I shared with him how we had seen the power of God pour out, like things out of the book of Acts, you know. And then I also shared with him how when I really needed to see a miracle, that I had not seen one for my brother, but that he kept going anyway. And that we were encountering God's presence no less in those days when we were still waiting on a breakthrough, you know? And I said, so we go on and we trust the Lord. And he goes, you know what? My BS meter is pretty good, but I think I believe your story. I was like, good talk, you know? So I go backstage and Jay's still back there. And he rolls over to me and he goes, well, how's it look out there? I said, well, there's one guy, I think Jesus wants to do something in his life, you know? He said, can you show me? And he had never done that before. I said, yeah, I guess so. So imagine two pudgy Weaver brother faces like sticking out from behind the, you know, <laughs> the curtain. And I point him out. And Jay starts crying, you know? And he's not the crier, I'm the crier. You know what I mean? And I said, what? And he said, when we were praying over the room, Jesus showed me that guy's face before you did. So I'm like, that's probably good then. You know? We go into our set that night and we're worshiping the Lord. And Jay is over there, I mean, missing fingers, missing feet, you know? It's so much pain, but you would never know it. And he's just worshiping God with these messed up hands, you know? He's just lost in it. And I watched it wreck the guy on the front row, you know? And at one point, his hand is down and he's just like sobbing, you know? And then a little later on, I peek again, you know? And he's got his hands thrown up like this. And he's just worshiping God. He's singing like the, the words on the screen, you know? And then after the show, that's when we found out we had a hole in security because that dude was waiting for us in our dressing room. <laughs> like to scared me to death because as soon as Jay rolled in the room, this guy was just after him and he was so loud. And he's like, why are you not just after you, God? And just says it. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. There's like Baptist people everywhere. You know? <laughs> Jay does not miss a beat. He wheels around in his chair to face the guy. And he goes, I get it. I get it being frustrated. He goes, I get it not understanding. I get it kind of wanting to be angry. Maybe even at God sometime. He said, when I tried to get out of bed this morning and everything hurt, I started to get angry until I realized Jesus is the only one who can get me through this day that he carries me through every day. The guy just starts bawling and falls to his knees. The rest of us are just standing behind him. Jay wheels over there as fast as his little motorized wheelchair can get him. He's like, man, and he's like just getting there, man. And he's got his messed up hand. He puts it on the guy's head and he just goes, Jesus, show him he's not a victim. Jesus, show him he's your son. Show him that even when he gave up on you, that you never gave up on him. The guy is just sobbing. 
and squeaks out. I want Jesus to heal you so bad. Jesus, me too. I'm telling you, on January the 2nd, Jay got all new everything. I thought we had more time with him. And I didn't see how we could come and do this time. Except for that I knew if Jay was here, this is where he would be. And I think that even in light, somehow in my heart, I hear him making commentary on all this that has happened, you know. The morning of his funeral, when I woke up at three o'clock in the morning, and I I didn't want them to open that casket. I didn't want to see him. I was afraid to see his body. But when they did, and I looked at him and it didn't even look like him. Because he's not there. He wasn't there. He is with Jesus right now. He is in heaven right now. And I just need to tell you tonight, there is only one way to get to heaven. And it is through the Son of God. What Jesus has done for us, receiving what it is that He has done for us. If you don't know Him, all you have to do is say this, God, I want to receive what you've done for me. I confess I'm a sinner. That I've messed up, that I've blown it. But I want to turn away from my ways. And I want to turn to your ways. I want to receive what you've done for me. Jesus, come and live inside of me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Make me ready for heaven. Because we don't know when that day is coming. Amen. But I know my dad's there. I know my mom's there. I know my brother Jay is there. And even though I'm missing him, I'm telling you, he lived out an example that I'm still learning from and am challenged by every single day. This life is not the end, amen? Oh, can we sing another couple? All right, can you bring me a guitar?